Hello everybody, this is Amin. And this is Alex. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. Uh, in this episode of our ongoing coverage with regards to the COVID-19 situation in Malaysia. In today's episode, we're going to talk about antibody tests. Alright, so just uh, let's recap about what's happening right now. So we are in some sort of an MCO situation. <laughs> I don't know what it is called now. Uh, we know the number of cases are getting worse. Uh, the number of positive cases are getting worse. But we are, we are hitting, what, 17K? So the show today is uh, recorded on the Friday or th- Friday 30th of July. So for those of you who are watching and, you know, I get comments uh, in the comment section saying that, oh, you know, this is a high insight thing. No, it's not. We are recording much earlier. And unfortunately, sometimes the announcements happen on Friday itself or over the weekend or over the week that we pre- we, we, we get this show ready. And when it comes out, things have already changed. So this is uh, recorded on the 30th of July, much earlier than any announcements that's happened. And it is c- as current at is, as it can be with the information that we have on hand up to today. Okay. So the situation today, I don't have the COVID numbers today. They're not published yet. But we saw close to 18,000 yesterday. Uh, COVID numbers are increasing, um, but that's not something that we should look at. Uh, we've established that in our previous episodes to say that, you know, positive cases is not the number to look at now. It is the number, obviously, the number of ICU cases and the number of deaths. Yes, there are, there are those are worrying numbers. But the important number to look at for us to return back to normal is uh, vaccination. And we are on track. So we are on track to get 80% of the country's population vaccinated by the end of this year. Uh, and we are on track to get 100% of adults in Klang Valley vaccinated by the 1st of August. Um, with at least one dose. Yeah, you're right. Um, now, the, with the chase to get as many people vaccinated, we are looking at what, 200, 400,000 people vaccinated a day. Um, there is inevitably this thing that's going on, right? Uh, people are getting ghost jabs and that's what we've been talking about in the previous episode. And thankfully, you know, the government and KJ who is looking after the vaccination program is paying attention to this. And thankfully, they have um, said that they have changed or updated the SOP when people are getting vaccination. You go and get your vaccination where previously you cannot record yourself. Now you can. And uh, KJ also encouraged and announced that, you know, you should look at the needle that's going into your hand and make sure that uh, the you know, the plunger is being pressed so that the vaccine actually does go into your body. It's funny because it's normalizing this thing, this ghost jab thing. And it's weird because despite saying that, we are still seeing a number of instances where people are still getting ghost jabs. Despite, I think KJ is saying in his announcement that this is not a lot and he wants to like get rid of this. Looking at people getting their jabs and recording yourself being injected is not the solution to the problem. It is a medicine, but it is not a solution to the cause of the problem, which is like, why are people doing this? We don't know. We are thinking that it could be because they are anti-vaxxers. It's definitely not because they're fatigued, but something is going on. So why am I talking about this? It's because there is a worry. There is a genuine worry among people whether they actually got their jabs or not. So Before KJ made the announcement, there's already been millions of people getting their vaccination. Before the ghost jab issue was uh, detected, there were already millions of people getting their vaccination. Now people are wondering whether whether they actually did get vaccination. Those who got vaccination but didn't get any side effects. Those who got vaccination and didn't look and didn't record. A lot of these people are now concerned. Did I actually get the vaccination? Now, while there is no way to know, uh, we are seeing now a trend in, in the market and on social media. People are saying, uh, we see pharmacies and we see people are recommending, oh, okay, to find out whether or not you should, whether or not you did get a vaccine jab, why not take an antibody test? And sparks fly <laughs> and fires erupt. And everybody's now saying, okay, we should take an uh, 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 antibody, antibody test. test. Even, even the what uh, the uh, police. the police, <laughs> the chief of police was it, Alex? Yeah, the the director for the CID at Bukit Aman. He said uh-huh. that uh, because following incident, right, he asked people to to make a police report. If you believe that you got a ghost jab, please make a police report. Mm. And he also added that, oh, if you receive your two doses, he also recommends people to take a COVID nineteen um, antibody test. 
30 mm. days after completing their vaccination. But of course, later on, the next day, the police IGP, the bigger boss, mm. he, he said that he regretted that statement because the police has no jurisdiction to recommend such tests. But like you said, it's everywhere. You can see on Facebook, right? I'm getting a lot of ads from PathLab, from uh, I think Care Center, a lot of mm. uh, labs are offering this uh, COVID-19 antibody test for like 120 ringgit. So mm. the question is, is this reliable? And what can it do? Yeah, I guess the other question is whether you should get an antibody test or not before you even consider whether it's reliable or not. And then just to add to the CID, I think what triggered it was before um, uh, Adhan Baba, the Minister of Health, right? He announced that, oh, you know, for those who got ghost jabs, uh, we will, we will, you know, we will give you another appointment slot so that you can get a proper jab. And he didn't answer the question of how do you know whether you got <laughs> ghost jabs or not how do you prove it then inev- inevitably the 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 hunt went for a method to find uh, a method to to know whether you gotten a jab or not so in theory the method is this you get an antibody test right and, and the antibody test could then kind of indicate whether you've gotten the jab or not or whether you've been infected by COVID-19 or not. Now, the question is, like Alex mentioned, whether this test is reliable, should you get it? And does it actually do what you think it does, which is prove that you've gotten a vaccine jab or not, right? So we've... I think we've published a, like a really lengthy article uh, address and uh, asking this question on com. But I would like to discuss about it further in this episode just to see, you know, first to to hear to to discuss number number one and number two is to get your opinion right our viewers and listeners uh, again we, we've been getting a lot of comments a lot of feedback and a lot of discussion going on in the comment section on our YouTube uh, channel and I really like that and I really want to know what you guys think okay but before that I want to go to Alex all right so what is the TLDR on the antibody situation so basically the COVID-19 antibody test right uh, as you can see for a lot of labs the way they advertise is that how do you know whether your immune system is working towards the COVID-19 vaccination so they say that this test is to determine the level of antibodies or COVID-19 antibodies in your body mm. and they also put a disclaimer that very clear that vaccines don't form the antibodies because the antibodies are actually uh, as a, re- a result of the immune response after getting the vaccination. So when you get a vaccine, so it will trigger immune response and your body will actually generate the antibody. Mm. So just to clear that misconception, so the vaccine doesn't come from the jab. You're not injecting antibodies to your your body. The antibody doesn't come from the vaccine jab, you mean? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it all depends on immune system. So it varies from one person to the other person. And there are cases whereby people got injected with vaccines, but there's no antibody because your immune system is not working. So it's a lot of possibilities. Wow. And also the level of, of antibodies varies from one person to person because like I said, it depends on the antibodies. So when you get this test, right, it's not, you don't expect like, they get this injection? Yes, no. It's not a clear answer. You just get like a reading of the, how much antibodies you have in, in, your, in your body. But mm. they get, then again, a lot of uh, health medical experts, they chime into this topic. Like, is it mm. necessary for you to get this kind of test mm. to find out whether you've gotten a ghost jab or not? And most mm. of them have said no. And then I think uh, a, a week back, Dr. Ghost Azam, who's actually the advisor for MOSTI, mm. he said that antibody tests are not recommended at the moment, even by the FDA and the CDC, to check whether your vaccines are working. Mm. And if you look at FDA's website, it says that, you know, um, these tests are currently authorized to test whether a person, you know, has a previous history of, of COVID before. But mm. to determine whether they have protection against COVID, that's still being researched at the moment. So mm. Dr. Ghost Azam said that um, if you want to take the test, it's actually best left for research use only because he said the people should not rush out and get the test just to find out whether they got a bright protection or not because it's too early to tell right now. And mm. he also elaborated that the, the test, right, is very specific because he mentioned a few examples. Like um, if let's say it's, det- it's meant to detect spike proteins, some only detects like a nu- uh, nucleo, uh, capsid protein, so it's different. Well, so, what's that? What is a nu- nucleo? I know what a spike protein is. That is the one that, that atta- uh, attaches to our, our cells and get inside our, our cells and then starts uh, allowing the virus to reproduce and, and create more of themselves, right? So yep. what is this? Uh, what is it called again? Nucleo capsid whatever it is nucleocapsid protein yeah so he's he explained that okay those okay those kids that target nucleo uh nucleocapsid we know mm. detect antibody response from vaccines that target the spike protein like pfizer and astrazeneca mm. so in the flip side if you take the other test that's meant for spike protein and the sensitivity is low mm. you know detect inactivated vaccines like sinovac Mm-hmm. So it's not like a one size fit all. So it must be very specific. And most of these tests, if you see in the market, they didn't really advertise clearly what kind of test it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I saw on Pavlet, it says that it can 
support all vaccines, but it's not very really clear what kind of test they're doing. So it's quite vague. So, so there are two different types of tests. One is the one that looks at the nucleocapsid yep. thing, whatever that is. Protein, yeah. <laughs> and the other one looks for the spike protein. Basically, they are looking for indicators of the virus inside your body. And there are also uh, uh, multiple types of uh, vaccines. One uses the inactivated virus. One is the what RNA that uses like a, a, a genetic... Spike protein. A, gen- a genetic code of the virus and to trick your body to say that, oh, the virus is in your body and you need to generate an immune response. To either way... check the spike protein, yeah. Yes. So either way, at the end of the day, um, do does all do all of us need to go out and get a antibody test to see whether we've been vaccinated or not? Uh, the test costs around 120 ringgit. Uh, I don't think uh, it's cheap. I think I think that's quite expensive just to figure out whether you got a jab or not. And the indication is saying that this is not not even a reliable. It's not even a test that is designed to do that, right? It, let's even let's not even talk about reliability here. It's not even a test designed to do that. Yeah, it's not robust at the moment, so it's not really recommended. No, it's like it's like you. Okay, so it's, not it's like, like a you, clear yes no answer. <laughs> it, it's like you testing your tire pressure by kicking it. You know, it's like you kick yeah. it and it's like, oh, I think enough tire pressure. But it's not. I mean, kicking your tire is not a test designed to determine whether there is enough pressure in your tire or not. So taking this test is not a test to determine whether you have been vaccinated or not. Yeah. Then, I guess my yeah. question is, my question is, why is this test around? I guess... It's, uh, some people are saying that you know, these health labs are, you know, they're just taking advantage of the situation because there's a lot of concern about uh, ghost jabs. Mm. So they take advantage. Of, okay, you know what? This is a good time for us to promote this test because people want to find out. Let's give them what they want. But the mm. point is that it doesn't give them the, the, the straight answer because at the end of the day, you take this test, right? you get a report with a number. But what does the number really mean? Mm. If you have low number, does it mean that you got ghost jab or not? Mm. It's not clear. What is this number that you're talking about? It's like the antibody levels. So mm-hmm. that's what it's saying. So it depends on the test. Because I haven't seen the test result. I haven't taken mm-hmm. one myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether we should take one or not. But as we said, I don't think it's necessary because we're going to get a number and who's going to decipher that? Mm-hmm. So if you get a, get a, if you do get a test, I guess the best person to, to determine is to talk to your doctor, I guess, to find out what does it really mean. Mm-hmm. Because like we said earlier, right, um, the vaccine is not directly from, sorry, the antibody is not directly from the vaccine. It's based on mm-hmm. immune response. And each mm-hmm. person's immune response is different. So mm-hmm. someone might have higher number, some could be lower number. But does that, what does that number actually mean? If you have a low number, does it mean that you are not protected? You could be protected because mm. I believe there's a lot of factors that need to be accounted for to determine mm. whether you're protected from COVID-19 or not. Mm. And then I'm not sure whether the number of antibody is a determinant factor of whether you're immune or not. It's not like, okay, yep. if you are, if the number is 100, then you're immune. Or if, yep. you, if the number is 50, then you're not immune. Because it depends on, like you said, right? It depends on the person, right? So if a person is healthy, maybe the antibody number is low. Or if the person is not healthy, maybe the antibody number is high. We don't know. And if that person it has a high metabolic rate or a low metabolic rate, all this can differ. So yep. this is not a, this is not a reliable test. Um, yep. But why 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 does this test exist in the first place? I mean, if it's not reliable, it's not if it's not reliable, right? Why does it even exist? Why who who in their right mind would create something that doesn't work and sell it? I got a feeling this test was here. It was, it's not just newly introduced now. I think it's been around for quite a while. I think it's to detect whether you have history of COVID-19. Mm. That's, that's, that's the intended purposes. But mm. somehow, I think it can be repurposed to find out whether you have antibody levels following vaccination. So not I guess... Re- uh, yeah, so ahead. I guess it's like like they rehash the product for another intention. It's not repurposed, I guess. It's like, uh, oh, we can interpret this or I, do, I don't know what is the intent of all these pharmacists to do this. Obviously, it's for marketing and all that. I'm not sure yeah. whether they, they, I'm not sure whether they'll go like, you know what, people will find out and they will, they will stop taking the test. I guess uh, as long as people are selling supplements and as long as people are buying supplements, there is a market for this. I'm not saying that this is a supplement, but the, the psychology of purchasing something like this or taking a test that is something like this is similar to a supplement like you know people sometimes forego getting medicine and they prefer getting supplements just because they believe in wanting to be organic or wanting to have an alternative alternative uh, way to treat whatever ailment that they are facing and this is this is one the difference between that and this is that with supplements you have options you can buy from different different you can buy different supplements you can i mean i'm not saying that they work but there are options out there and you can choose, right? For the antibody test, while there are different brands, and while you, you can choose, it's easy to get people sucked into the hype because it's like, hey, you know what? There is no other way right now. And something is better than nothing, you know? 
Yeah, I think yeah, I guess it's, it's um it 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 came in the time where people are desperate to know because people yeah. like some people they just want to hey, did I get vaccinated or not? And then this is the closest thing, like you said, right? Like this not hundred percent, but it's yeah. like a sort of an indication. Like maybe for some people, like, as long as it's not zero, I think I got a vaccine, lah. You know, some <laughs> people just want to have that 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 uh that confident boost. And 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 you and you know what? These labs are like, they're actually quite smart. They think. Marketed as in the sense that oh, did you get vaccinated? They didn't say that. They just mm. really say that this to find out how's your immune system work responding mm. to the vaccination. Mm. So it's very, very smart of them to do that. But in a way, it's in a way some people say you know you're just uh, high quality. You're trying to take advantage of the fears of the people. Yeah, it's but, it's, it's playing on the fears lah. It's like uh, it's like it's like saying you know this this medicine can cure baldness. You can't say that in the supplementary market in the supplements market. Yes. You can't say that a cure for baldness. You can't. But yeah. are you losing your hair? You know, yeah, take this. correct. Uh, yes, like yeah, that. and also most of these tests, right? Uh, if you look at the the details, they said that they've been tested, they've been approved by the MDA, the mm. the medical the medical authorities, and also mm. endo- endorsed by IMR and MKAK, mm. and they said the tests also approved was go- have gotten the CE mark as well as FDA emergency use authorization. So mm. it looks like yeah, looks it's legit, authorized, uh, it's legit. Uh, but uh. the thing is to get this for the purpose of testing to finding out whether you got vested or not it's not really that's not that's not the actual intention but people just put one and one together okay this is the thing I should test they believe what they want to believe lah, right I mean yes, correct. and I guess that's why we're here right so I, you know if you guys are watching this and you feel like oh this is a spark right? I was like oh I didn't think of it that way share share uh, let other people know that they need to watch this or at least discuss with them like you know what this this antibody test is not something that that you should you should look into okay are we doctors are we medical professionals no, we're not. Um, but we've done extensive reading and research on this matter. And we're not saying that, yeah, you should take our advice, but we've done the reading for you. We've done the work for you. I mean, and if it's something that we're not comfortable doing, I think we can safely say that it shouldn't be something that you should be doing as well. The reason yeah. why I mentioned the supplementary market is because as the supplements market is, is because it's the same thing, right? Um, uh, guess what? You know, supplements and all that will have to get approval from MDA. They will have to get approval from the Ministry of Health because of the contents that are within the supplements. The Ministry of Health need to ensure that the contents is not poison and it's not unsafe for human consumption. That's all it does. It does test the effectiveness of that supplement. Like for example, vitamin C. Um, you can take like 10 times the daily dosage of vitamin C and you should be fine. But does that make your antibody better? Does that make you immune from COVID or immune from fever or whatever? It's again questionable. It's not proven. It's the same thing as this one, right? So I think what the the approvals and, and the testing does for this kit is to say that, okay, you can take this test and it's not, it's not going to give you like weird results. Uh, it's not going to make you feel sick. It's not going to get you any side effects. And that's it. And also going to uh, because this article published by the Malay Mail. Mm. So they quote this uh, Dr. Ku uh, Yong Kian. He's the health care administrator in Singapore and also, he's also a managing director, uh, managing editor of the Malaysian Medical Gazette. Mm. He said that the body produced many antibodies at a given time. Mm. In the context of COVID-19, the main antibodies produced are against the nucleocapsid proteins and mm. spike protein. In a natural COVID-19 infection, both um, nutri- nucleocapsid and spike protein antibodies are produced. But in a vaccine, like mostly RMR, sorry, mRNA, immune mm. response, only the S antibodies will be produced. So he said that, therefore, if the tests are in the market, do not specify what type of antibodies it tests, or it doesn't have someone with the knowledge to interpret correctly, it might give a false uh, interpretation. Mm. And also like what uh, Dr. Uh, Ghost Azam said that, you know, the function of specific antibodies that can neutralize the virus is more important than the level of the total antibodies. So mm. the neutralizing effect is not readily deciphered by a serology test at the moment. And there's no more research are required for this at the moment, for this, mm. for this kind of test. Yeah, that's what like, like how we said, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that if I get 100, I'm, I'm fully immune. Or if I get 50, I'm 50% immune. It's not. It's not like it's, an exam, like Chimalang, yeah. It's not yeah. clear as that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, okay, you, you should think of antibodies like a tool you have in your toolbox. It doesn't mean that if you have 10 screwdrivers, it's better than one screwdriver, right? Yeah. If you have like 10 different types of screwdriver, then it's better than one screwdriver. You get what I'm saying? 
You get the difference? I hope you guys I hope you guys get the difference. It's like that lah. It's like it's like you have like different types of screwdrivers to be used for different types of screws, like a Phillips head, a Torx head, a Allen head, whatever it is, right? So antibody is the same thing. You need to have that one type of antibody for that one type of virus or that one range of virus. So it's the same thing because all these antibodies, they can replicate. Uh, the, the antibody test is to test how strong... Okay, sorry, not to say that. Level. Mm, what I'm trying to say is like, the, the the capability of your body to generate uh, the number of a sp- specific antibody is dependent on your health and again on your health condition on your body's genetics it's not dependent on this test so so bottom line is so to answer the question right so I think we put out what three questions number one is whether you should take this test whether this test is reliable and yeah I think were there any other questions? I think that was pretty much it. So the bottom line is, um, if you feel that you've gotten a ghost jab until today, there is actually until today, the thirtieth of July, twenty twenty one, there is no way to to know. Unfortunately, I mean, let's record yourself. Yeah, yeah, that is the truth. What? Should you go and take this test? I mean, if it makes you feel good, uh, because, you know, feeling good f- about yourself also helps boost your immune system. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it does, dude. I mean, if you go out and exercise, yeah, that helps True. boost your immune system. If you feel good and not makes depressed, you feel, yeah, makes that you makes you sleep better at night. Yeah, uh, that also boosts your immune system because it's all about metabolism and, and stuff like that, right? So, yeah, if the, if it does make you feel good and not worry and make you sleep at night so that you get better rest so that your body can generate more any antibodies, sure, go and spend 120 ringgit for sure. But I think, uh, you know, I think I'll spend 120 ringgit on something else. I don't um, know, man. I think some people mm. will take a test and might feel worse. <laughs> Yeah, what if, what if, oh, sorry, you're not immune. And then it's like, oh my God, should I get more jabs? Yeah, but in fact, <sighs> maybe you get two real jabs, but just so happen the numbers are low. But the numbers doesn't really doesn't give you like, anything. doesn't yeah. mean anything. It's not hard. Yeah. It's not definitive that, you know, you're protected or not. Because so, some uh, people, some people are naturally immune, right? So if some people are naturally immune, the number of antibodies generated is lower because they are already immune. That means their body doesn't have to fight the virus because the body is used to the virus, right? Some people need to fight the virus. Then the the antibody is there to fight the virus. So, I don't know. Um, then why this? Why did this test exist? Uh, I think like you mentioned, Alex, the test exists to detect whether you've had been, uh, had been infected by COVID or not. And... Uh, based on the FDA, based on the doctors that we've read, based on the reports that we've seen, antibody test is only effective to show that your body has been exposed to the virus itself. And whether you have a count of 100 or whatever arbitrary number that is presented in the, in the, in the results of the test, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Is there yep. anything else you, wanna, you wanted to add? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So not recommended at the moment. So you want to find out whether you go check or not? This is not the, the test that you, you need to take. Yes. Uh, for now, I think our advice is to is prevention is better than cure. So to prevent ghost jabs, you got to record yourself. Be diligent. You got to ask. But be, be, you know, ask in a polite manner. I also don't want to discount that our healthcare professionals, our nurses, our doctors, and, our, and all the other staff that are supporting the nurses and doctors are stretched so thin right now. They are tired. I'm not denying that. And they are stressed out. But is that an excuse? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you must imagine that uh, right now, as of today, uh, Malaysia has been administering more than 500,000 doses for four straight days. So can you imagine how many jabs have been administered per person every single day? Yeah, but the question is, is that an excuse to, to do such a thing as these ghost jabs? I can excuse if there was a mistake. Like personally, for me, there was a mistake made when I, was, when I got my first dose. Uh, the needle wasn't inserted properly. And when the nurse or medical professional uh, in, uh, in, uh, pressed the plunger, the, the, the vaccine actually uh, went like it, it trickled out. It didn't, it didn't go inside my body. Um, the person acknowledged that it was wrong, said sorry, and I got another jab. You know, that's my personal uh, encounter. Uh, I was polite. I didn't, I wasn't upset. I mean, they, they are humans too. And I, I do agree. Maybe they felt nervous. Maybe they felt tired. Um, maybe they felt like this is like hell to them because every day they wake up, they do the same thing. They're just injecting people. I don't know. Maybe in their sleep, they're even doing that. I don't know. You know? And they're also we, we in need, a high-risk environment. Yeah, and they're exposed to the to the to the to the um, virus every day. So we need to be nice to them. 
I know we are stressed. I know we are also facing through a lot of things, staying at home and not doing anything and waiting for things to be normal. But as much as it is not an excuse for the medical workers to give you ghost jabs, no matter how tired or how stressed they are, it is also not a, not an excuse for us, no matter how tired or how stressed we are, to stop being polite, to stop treating people like human beings. So it goes both ways, guys. All right, everybody, uh, it's that time of the show again where we read and respond to all of your amazing comments uh, from our previous episode. So the episode that we're responding to is uh, our Ghost Jab episode uh, on Let's Talk About. So the first comment is from Elb Nock, and he says, I wonder if Ghost Jabs cause lower efficacy rates because of human error, meaning you thought you got the jab but didn't got COVID-19 and contributed to the low efficacy rate. There are videos in other countries where the language spoken is not from here who also got ghost jabs. So you have to wonder if that ends up as statistics. Also, after jabs, you would get a batch number and vaccine number. So if a third party needed to audit, it should be possible. There should not be anybody with the same vaccine number. At the end of each day, there should be a stock check. So if people people got empty syringes, there, there should be excess vaccines than the number of people who checked in. I would attribute the nurse in the drive-thru as having fatigue from standing out in the sun and rain all day. We should not have the same issue in indoor PPVs. All right, what do you think, Alex? I think here's a point. Uh, let's say you're supposed to get two doses, but only get one dose. Obviously, you're not getting the full protection from the vaccine. So if you mm. do get get affected by COVID, yeah, that would possibly contribute to the low efficacy rate. So it is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, on a, on a, on a about, we talk about the batch number, yeah, I, I, be, I believe each of the, the valve, there's a set number of um, doses that's possible. But mm-hmm. I also need to point out that it is possible to squeeze that extra dose because we use the, it's a particular needle, I think it's the LDV needle. You can actually squeeze mm-hmm. one extra dose because the valves, right, you can actually squeeze an extra dose if you use a special needle. So you can get more. So let's say if this valve is 10, you might be able to get maybe uh, uh, 11 shots from one. But it is possible for them to track back because each vial there's a serial number so they can trace it back. But then again, considering ghost jabs, right, it's possible that someone fill up the syringe, uh, jab you, but then press the plunger and just throw the whole needle into the wastebasket. So that's also possible. So that also doesn't mean that there's, actually, there's an additional shot from the, from the same batch. Yeah, I think the batch number is designed to detect whether there is like a problem with a batch. Yes. So let's say if I got a batch, I got a bad batch, right? And like, like suddenly like 5, 10, 20,000 people from, from this batch got like problems. Right? Then you know, okay, this yeah. is a this is a batch, bad batch and you can trace it back. Yeah. But I'm not sure whether you can trace ghost jabs. Like you mentioned, Alex, right? I, uh, somebody can just take the, take the dose and then just inject it in the air and it's done. Like I said uh, in the show, right? Um, for, for my instance, for example, I got like, two jabs of the first dose because one was rejected because there was a mistake and I got another one. So how do you trace that, right? So that having the batch number tracing doesn't account for those errors. I don't know. Again, also for the efficacy rate, is the efficacy rate something that is still ongoing in terms of people? Are, are they still counting that number? Because previously, I, if I'm not mistaken, the efficacy rate was counted during the testing phase and not during when it's already in life, in a, in a live environment. So I'm not sure about that. They still do that, of course. Uh, like for example, during the like, for example, if there's a new cases that's happening, they can actually mm. look into the data. Okay, how many of these p- new cases are vaccinated? How many? How many of them have one dose or two doses? So it is possible that a person who said that oh I got infected, I have two doses, but in reality that he only has one dose. He didn't complete the vaccination. So that could be the the issue here. Mm. Okay, I guess then, uh, yes, uh, ghost jabs can contribute to the efficacy number being low. Again, the scary part for me is we don't know the degree and the severity of ghost jabs. We don't know how many people got ghost jabs. We don't know. So we don't know. Yeah, the confirm as of uh, two weeks ago was three mm. cases uh, and that's with proof. So, you know, we don't know how, how, how extensive this thing is. Yeah, so let's assume the number is low. Then I guess if the number is low, considering the millions of doses administered, um, we can we can take ghost jabs out of the efficacy calculation because it's, it's, some, it's something within the margin of error, right? So to answer that yep. question. And whether we can batch, we can trace back those who've gotten ghost jabs with the batch number, I think uh, I, I think that's almost impossible. Almost yeah. impossible. I think about it because the one batch, right, it could be like thousands of, of, uh, of vials 
And there's mm. a lot of, the same batch can be distributed to multiple vaccination centers, multiple stations, and multiple booths. So it's hard to trace back, actually. Yep. Okay, let's go on to the next comment. Uh, this is from Muhammad Dahlan, and he says, good to have this show. Thank you very much. And then he goes on to say, I'm worried after the news of those blank shots given to our citizens, I had the first and second doses in BCCK Kuching, Sarawak. And after the news spread, I realized that the, the two jabs I got felt nothing went in my upper arm. I just felt the needle just poke in my upper arm. I didn't see the sh- syringe after it's done. After all done, I got my digital certificate and felt no side effects as some people had. But I don't have video to prove that. What should I do? Okay. Mm. What do you think? I think the first uh, first thing I want to address is the side effects. Um, it is normal for some people that don't have any side effects after vaccination. Uh, because like, for example, AstraZeneca, right? Um, I think it's known for having like one of the, the worst side effects I've seen. Almost everyone I know have muscle aches, have fever, mm. sudden mm. chills, feeling mm. heaty. But I know some people who didn't get any side effects at all. Like, wow, lucky you. Only a headache. Mm. Similar to my second dose. So second dose, surprisingly, I didn't feel any major side effects. I only have a minor headache and that's pretty much it. But one of our colleagues, Zach, who is actually mm. doing our videos, mm. he had he's down like for one or two days because he's feeling mm. heaty and all that. Mm. But I'm pretty sure that I got injected because I have the video, but I didn't get the side effects. So mm. to long story short is that uh, don't worry if you don't have any side effects. It doesn't mean that your immune response are not working. It's just that mm. some people have side effects, some people don't. So it's normal. Mm. Mm. And about whether you can do anything about it, um, unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you right now because there's no definitive way to know that you get a yep. ghost jab if you don't have any hard evidence. So even if you go to a police station and report how they're going to investigate, what is it going to be mm. based on? So mm. I don't think there's a there's an answer for that right now. Yeah, uh, I want to add to that. I think that that's the scary part, right? Because uh, while the health minister has said that, oh, those who have gotten ghost jab, we will we will reschedule yeah, your appointment. You'll you'll get another 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 jab. The problem is even he does not know, and nobody knows how to prove whether you've gotten ghost jabs or not. Uh, the government has not addressed this in a holistic manner. Okay, to be fair, KG has said now you can record yourself. Now you can do this. Now you can do that. That's not a hundred percent coverage because yeah, while well, you can record yourself. Some people don't. Some people are still scared. Uh, we did mention in our ghost jab video that one of the ways to do this, to to solve this problem, to prevent this from happening, is a 100% coverage of the uh, booth where you get vaccinated. So you can do it in, in two ways. Number one, you can either implement a video, a CCTV in the booths. If that is too expensive, you can put one person as a witness to witness that you've been jabbed. And they they haven't they I don't know maybe after this announce after this video they will announce uh, to add in more implementation to more processes to to make sure that the ghost jab is eliminated altogether. But uh, Muhammad Dahlan, to answer your question, what should you do right now? Uh, I think you should just remain calm, and stay safe, continue to practice all the good uh, SOPs like wearing masks and washing your hands, and hopefully <laughs> you've been vaccinated. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't have. We don't have any recommendations for you. And also, uh, just to add on, um, this is something that's still uh, ongoing because the government is still studying whether we need to have a third dose or not. So let's say if we, we do have to get a third dose uh, early next year, uh, make sure that you record yourself or you really look at the arm to make sure that you really got jabbed. So that's the only thing I can say right now. Mm. Okay, the last and final comment uh, that we're reading today is from Anson Ong. And he says, do you worry about pre-filled syringe. When I got uh, in for first dose, there are a bunch of syringe that pre-filled with vaccine. We don't know what's inside actually and they want us to scan the code before the jab. I thought it should be after and I got from my friend said that he requests them to fill in a new syringe in front of him and he got scolded by the vaccinator that my friend are slowing down the whole process and he requests to fill them but he got shown the room poster which shows no camera and recording are allowed. Me myself do not have any side effect after first dose which I am worried I am getting so-called vitamin rather than vaccine. Okay, what do you think, Alex? Okay, about the pre-filled syringe, uh, that's actually normal. It's just actually practiced by a lot of uh, mega PVBs, especially especially if we're going to vaccinate like tens of thousands of people in a single day. Uh, in fact, doing pre-filling is actually safer and actually better. It's more efficient because they can actually um, prepare the syringe in advance, one shot, to make sure that each uh, syringe are filled correctly. Because if you do, you want to do it for every single person, right? That's going to take time because. Uh, if you, in case you didn't know, they need two different needles to, 
to to do the whole process. One needle, mm. which is, I believe is bigger, to extract mm. the, the vaccine from the valve into the syringe. Mm. Mm. And before injecting, they need to switch to a, a smaller needle, which is normally in orange color, to inject to your arm. So mm. if you want them to do that for every single person, that's going to take a long time. That's why they pre-fill it up front. And also another reason why they do this to avoid possible errors. Like you, like right now, we have ghost jets because of some people getting fatigued. So mm. imagine if a nurse is really fatigued and she mm. fill the whole syringe with six doses, like mm. what happened in some certain countries. Mm. And that could be even, <laughs> even worse, right? You can mm. get overdose of vaccines. Yeah. So to answer that question is, there's nothing wrong with pre-filled syringes. Um, it's fine. Uh, I think like what you said, right? Um, your, your friend is slowing down the process. Yeah, because you want them to pull a fresh vaccine from a vial, this is going to take time. Mm. And that's the reason why they pre-fill it to make it faster. Mm. And but also another question is, when, when did this happen? Because uh, KJ has really announced that everyone can record in the vaccination booth uh, mm. since uh, I think middle of, of July onwards. Mm. So like for me, right, previously, uh, there wasn't this SOP, but I, nice, I asked the vaccinator nicely, uh, can I record myself? The person said, sure. Because I told the person that I won't record the, the person's face, I just want to record myself. They're fine with it. Mm. So uh, I don't know about when it happened, but from today onwards, sorry, from last week onwards, you should be able to record yourself, no issues. Yeah, and uh, just to add, I think uh, this is what the ghost jabs is doing to people. People are becoming paranoid. They're becoming scared. They're becoming uncertain and insecure. For all intents and purposes, uh, all the recordings of ghost jabs that we've seen show either a needle full filled with the vaccine that's not being injected or just an empty needle. Uh, I think to think that people, uh, the health professionals are putting something else in the uh, syringes and injecting you with something else is beyond the scope of what this ghost jab problem is. So I, I personally think that that is not even a problem right now mm, because that involves a whole other level of conspiracy and, and uh, coordination um, that involves more than one people. So I, I think that's not the concern. So you shouldn't be worried. If you've gotten the jab and you feel that uh, the syringe, uh, the plunger was pressed and you feel something going into your body, I think 99% it is the vaccine. So that's not something you should worry about. Um, yes, I agree. Requesting for, I, I mean, we shouldn't, like I said in my in the show, right? We shouldn't, we, we should also acknowledge that these people are tired. We shouldn't request for things beyond what they are doing already. If they are doing what they're doing to speed up the process because they are doing their responsibility to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Let's just cooperate with that. And yeah. if, and if you are record, if you are getting a vaccination after this show, uh, after the the 30th of July uh, or mid of July, there shouldn't be a problem because the SOP has been revised to allow you to record yourself being vaccinated. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So bottom line, the too long didn't read portion of this talk today is don't go out and wish 120 ringgit to get an uh, antibody test. It's not required no matter what everybody say okay again this show is uh, done on the 30th of July I don't know whether tomorrow suddenly you know Dr. Hisham says yes everybody go get a <laughs> go get go get an antibody test alright guys so uh, I guess that's pretty much it I guess uh, that's the cue for me to remind you we are also available on podcast so if you like listening to the show instead of watching it just search for Let's Talk About Soya Chin Chow and we are available on all of your favourite podcast platforms uh, if you do if you are listening to us on podcast please do give us a 5 star rating if you like the show because that uh, exposes the show to more and more people for those of you who are watching us on YouTube uh, do give us a thumbs up if the show is informative and helpful for you guys uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I invite you to join the discussion. Put in your comments and your thoughts and your feedback about the topic today and about the show in general. We love reading uh, your comments. So uh, have at it, guys. Uh, let us know what you think. All right. That's pretty much it. This is me, Amin. This is Alex. And uh, catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.